Chapter 8 The Invention Convention Detention After school, Mr. Krupp ushered George and Harold into the detention room and wrote a long sentence on the chalkboard. From now on, growled Mr. Krupp, you boys will spend two hours a day after school copying the sentence over and over. I want every chalkboard in this room filled completely! On his way out the door, Mr. Krupp turned and said with an evil grin, And if either of you leaves this room for any reason, I'm going to suspend you both! I will never do anything that angers my handsome and charming principal, Mr. Krupp, ever, ever again. Now, as you might have guessed, writing sentences was nothing new to George and Harold. The two boys waited until Mr. Krupp left the room, then they each took four homemade wooden rods out of their backpacks. The rods had holes in them that George and Harold had drilled in George's dad's wood shop. George screwed the rods together, while Harold inserted a piece of chalk into each hole. Then they each took a pole and began copying Mr. Krupp's sentence. Every time they wrote one sentence, the wooden poles made twelve! After about three and a half minutes, every chalkboard in the room was completely filled. George and Harold sat down and admired their work. We've got a lot of time in our hands now, said George. Got any ideas? Let's make a new comic book, said Harold. So the two boys took out some paper and pens and created an all-new adventure about their favorite superhero. It was called Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilets. Chapter 9, Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilets. For George Beard and Harold Hutchins. Captain Underpants and the Attack of the Talking Toilets. Story by George Beard. Pictures by Harold Hutchins. And one day at school, everything was pretty normal. The lunch ladies were serving toasted rat sandwiches. The principal was yelling, blah, blah, blah. And the gym teacher was being mean to everybody. My grandma can run faster than you guys. Then a UFO appeared. It zapped the school with an evil ray. The ray made all of the toilets come to life. It made them evil too. The toilets were hungry. Yum, yum, eat them up. So they ate the gym teacher. Help! The toilets just scratched somebody's car and ate up the gym teacher. Lord of mercy, was it my car? This looks like a job for a Captain Underpants. Crash. Captain Underpants ran to the storage room. Yum yum, eat him up. He found a bunch of plungers. He put them in the toilets. Their mouths got stuck. <sighs> now to stop that evil UFO. Captain Underpants went outside and saw the UFO. It opened up. Click. And out jumped the terrible Turbo Toilet 2000. I'll flush you. They had a big fight. Captain Underpants was faster than a speeding waistband. Zip! More powerful than boxer shorts. Kick! Ball. And able to leap tall buildings without getting a wedgie. Captain Underpants snuck up behind the Turbo Toilet 2000 and gave him a wedgie. Wedgie power! Ouchie. Then he hung the TT 2000 on a stop sign and pulled it back hard. Stretch. Then he let go. Twang! Kaboom! The spaceship blew up and all the toilets returned to normal. <sighs> even, the gym, even the gym teacher escaped! Oh man, the end. Trios Comic Sync. Chapter 10, A Big Mistake. George and Harold sat together in the detention room, reading through the newest comic book and beaming proudly. We've got to go into the office and make copies of this, said George, so we can sell them on the playground tomorrow! We can't, said Harold. Don't you remember? Mr. Krupp said he'd suspend us if he caught us leaving this room. Then we won't let him catch us, said George. George and Harold sneaked out of the room quietly and crawled down the hall to the office. Uh-oh, said Harold. There's a bunch of teachers in there. We'll never get to use the copy machine. Hmm, said George. Are there any other copy machines in the school? How about the one that Melvin had in the gym, asked Harold. Oh, yeah, said George. George and Harold crept over to the gym and found the Patsy 2000. I wonder if this machine still makes copies, said Harold. Melvin did say that he had made some adjustments to it. Oh, well, he probably just crammed the mouse in there to fool us, said George. It's the oldest trick in the book. I'm sure the machine still makes regular copies. George placed the cover of the new comic book face down on the glass screen and pressed start. All at once, the lights in the whole school dimmed, and the Patsy 2000 began to shake and clunk around wildly. 
Giant volts of static electricity zapped out the bottom of the machine as a great whirlwind rose from the top. Loose papers and other small objects in the room were sucked into the wind, and they spun above the machine like a reaching cyclone. I don't think it's supposed to do this! shouted George over the horrible noise. Finally, after a series of flashes and loud zaps, the noise, wind, and sparks stopped altogether. The only sound that could be heard was of something groaning and clawing about inside a bloated, battered frame of the Pansy 2000. It sounds like something's alive inside there, said Harold. George snatched the comic book from the top of the machine. Let's get out of here, he cried. Just then, a small ding was heard, and a full-sized, shiny white toilet emerged from the side of the Pansy 2000. Its teeth were sharp and jagged, and its angry eyeballs glowed with, with red, swelling veins. Yum, yum, eat a up, cried the evil toilet. Almost immediately, another talking toilet emerged, followed by another and another and another. Yum, yum, eat a up, they cried. Oh no, Melvin was right! The affordable atomic transom garbulating gets the fan to a plutonic sun septimizer really does create living, breathing, three-dimensional copies of two-dimensional images. Harold cried convultedly. I've got an idea, said George. What? asked Harold. Run! cried George. Chapter 11. The Invention Get Wretched Detention Suspension. George and Harold screamed and ran out the gym door, closing it tightly behind them. Aha! yelled Mr. Crub, who was just coming down the hall. You boys left the detention room! You know what that means, don't you? It wasn't our fault! cried Harold. Too bad! Mr. Crupp shouted with delight. You boys are officially suspended. Wait, cried George. You've got to listen. Behind this door is an army of evil, vicious, tall. I don't have to listen to you boys ever again, laughed Mr. Crupp. Now get your stuff and get out of the school. But, but, Harold stammered. You don't want to stand. Get out, Mr. Crupp screamed. George and Harold groaned and walked to their lockers to collect their stuff. Gosh, said Harold. And one day, we've got, a, we've got a detention, a suspension, and we've created an army of evil talking toilets who want to dig over the world. That's a pretty bad day, even by our standards, said George. Oh well, said Harold. I just hope things don't get any worse. Chapter 12. Things Get Worse Word spread quickly throughout the office that George and Harold had been suspended. The teachers rushed out to cheer and laugh at the two boys. You're in big trouble now, chuckled Miss Anthrope. I can't wait to call your parents and tell them the news. Let's take their desks outside and chop them up, cried Miss Reebel. Let's throw a party in the gym, shouted Miss Demeanor. No! cried George. Whatever you do, don't open the door to the gym! We can do whatever we like, snarled Miss Demeanor as he dashed over to the gymnasium door. Look, I'm opening the door, he quickly opened the gym door. Now I'm closing the door, he said. Now I'm opening the door, now I'm opening the door again. And I'm, ah, I'm, 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 An evil toilet had stuck its mouth through the door, snapped Mr. Demeanor up, and swallowed him whole. Flesh. The talking toilets then pushed their way through to open the gymnasium doors and spilled down into the hallway. Yum, yum, eat him up, the, to the toilets bellowed. Yum, yum, eat him up. The teachers couldn't believe their eyes. They screamed and ran for their lives. Only Mr. Crubb, Miss Ribble, and George and Hill remained, frozen in fear. They watched, paralyzed, as the talking toilets came nearer and nearer. Finally, Miss Ribble pointed at the toilets and snapped her fingers. Snap! Go away! She cried. Go away this minute! But the toilets didn't listen. They moved closer and closer. Finally, Miss Ribble turned and ran. Mr. Crubb, however, just stood there in a daze. George and Harold looked up at him. Uh-oh, said Harold. Did she just snap her fingers? Yep, said George. Now we're really in trouble. And George was right for that moment. For at that moment, Mr. Crubb had begun to change. A silly, heroic smile came over his face as he stood defiantly before his foes. I'll put a stop to you, vile villains, he said fearlessly. But first, I need some supplies. Mr. Crupp turned and dashed to his office. George and Harold ran after him. Why did Miss Ribble have to snap her fingers? cried Harold. Why? Never mind that, 
cried George. Mr. Crump is turning into Captain Underpants. You've got to pull water over his head before it's too late.